Let's welcome in our co-hosts on this wonderful Wednesday, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy? Good morning, Rob. It is, and it is a wonderful Wednesday. And wonderful wet Wednesday. It is that. Is it still raining? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Maria Lawrenson, good morning to you as well. Good morning. Good to have you with us. Thank you for the Duquesne mug. You are quite welcome. Right. How cool is that? Uh, and uh, I want to get to our first guest right away because he is under time constraints, Dr. Alvin Moss from WVU Medicine. Good morning, Dr. Moss. How are you, sir? Uh, good morning. Good morning. But this morning, Rob, I'm uh, presenting my own opinions, not those of WVU Medicine. Absolutely. You are the uh, Health Sciences Center Director at uh, the uh, WVU, and I know you are, again, appearing on your own here. I just want to make sure people know your bona fides. Uh, yes, and, yes. Uh, it's the Center for Health Ethics and Law. Yes, Center for Health Ethics and Law, indeed. Uh, how long have you been on the faculty there, Dr. Moss? Forty years. Forty years. The governor of West Virginia is considering whether or not to sign the vaccination bill passed by the House and Senate. We've had you on the program talking about vaccinations before, and I want to, just to regroup my understanding of it, you are not anti-vaccination. You are for informed consent for the parent in uh, in the case of vaccinations. Is that a correct way to sum that up? Absolutely, that's correct. Okay, very good. What is your opinion on, on the governor and whether or not he should sign the vaccination bill in front of him? Well, I would love for him to sign it. Uh, it would give parents a little bit more opportunity to at least make decisions for their children who are enrolled in, in private and parochial schools. It's up to those schools to decide if the if the if the bill becomes law, uh, to decide what stance they want to take on mandatory vaccination, the bill would allow them to set their own policy. Why are and it would therefore allow parents in those schools to to make the to make an informed decision? They could decide to vaccinate their children, or if there are particular reasons why they wouldn't want to do it, they could decide not to vaccinate their children. Why are you, in particular, a uh, person who favors non-mandatory vaccines and informed consent for vaccination? Well, um, the, the hope was that this legislative session, a bill would have been passed that would have granted religious exemptions to mandatory vaccination in public as well as uh, private and parochial schools. That is the law in 45 other states. And so I'm Being interested in informed consent, and informed consent includes making decisions voluntarily, not being coerced. A mandatory vaccination law is coercive, and I'm in favor of letting people exercise their religious freedom, exercise their own ability to take in information and make a decision that's best for their family and for their children. Current vaccine law, unfortunately, doesn't take into account family history, doesn't even take into account history of the child with vaccines other than the one that is being, you know, whether the question is whether or not to administer this particular one. So if the child had a bad vaccine reaction to, let's say, uh, DTaP, but the vaccine under question right now is chickenpox, the fact that they had a bad vaccine reaction to the one doesn't play into how the immunization officer is going to decide. In fact, they're told only to consider the vaccine at hand. And so I think you or I, any of us would think, boy, the last time I took a medicine like that, I really, really got sick. I don't want to see my child or myself get really, really sick again. What if I have the same reaction? So it allows some knowledge of the family history, the past medical history. That's that's good medicine. You uh, you do need to be out by eight twenty, correct? I do. Thank you. Yeah, we want to make sure we get you out on time. I don't want to take all the questions on the interview. Uh, Bill, uh, uh, ask a question. Good next. morning, uh, Doctor Moss. Uh, you mentioned private and parochial schools, uh, but I believe the parochial schools have already made the announcement they will require vaccination. Is that correct? Catholic bishop. Ca- Catholic bishop. Yeah. Catholic bishop. Yeah. Yes, that's that's my understanding. Yeah. And 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 Bill, thank you for having me out at the Stubble in- Institute dialogue last June, uh, talking about lessons learned from the uh, pandemic. I thought that was productive. 
perspective, and I really appreciate your institute, um, you know, having these uh, public uh, forums. Uh, thank you very much for saying that, Dr. Moss. I thought that particular evening was one of the more informative uh, that we could have had. The discussion, I thought, covered a lot of ground, and it came from a couple of different aspects. And that's what discussion should do, uh, not trying to uh, hammer away, but just open it up for good, enlightening discussion. So uh, I really enjoyed meeting you, but I especially enjoyed meeting your wife. She's a, a delightful lady. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm sure she'll be glad to hear yes. that. Be careful, Doc. Bill's the silver fox. You've got to be careful. Okay. All right. But but anyway, uh, thank you. And also, thanks for being on today. Uh, when I heard that you were coming on, I had kind of I had anticipated. I know that you have a cautious approach to vaccination, and I thought it was going to be an extension of that. But of what I'm hearing is informed consent, informed consent, and uh, that's that's what we need on a lot of different fronts. Right. Right. I am fellowship trained in clinical medical ethics, and informed consent is sort of the pillar of patient care, if you will. It respects the ethical principle of respect for patient autonomy and the legal principle of self-determination. And so, you know, why can't we allow parents in this state to have the same freedom and same ethical and legal rights that they have in 45 other states? That's, you know, that's, that's pretty much my, my argument. Now, would that informed consent extend to uh, practically any level of medicine and uh in, in addition to vaccination? Well, yes, it would. So, for example, there are people who are Jehovah's Witnesses who, even though a blood transfusion might be indicated, they would refuse it. And we recognize their right to refuse a blood transfusion, even if they're very anemic. Maria Lawrenson. Good morning, doctor. Um, and we are um, we are happy to have you at hospice uh, later in um in April to talk about some um, end of life decisions. So thank you for yes. agreeing to that. Um, You're welcome. So uh, question then. So there, it appears there is a huge push um, by I think WVU Medicine Children's. Um, I saw a huge, well, full page ad in the local paper yesterday. I just heard. Um, uh, on the radio coming in, uh, you know, uh, a strong urging, an urgent message for the governor to um, uh, to not sign, you know, to to uh, veto. Um, so what's your what's your sense of that? Do you, I mean, maybe you're in the governor's ear, maybe you are not. Um, do you think there's a lot of pressure on either side for um, well, him to go one way or the other? Sure. What we've heard from the governor and from his staff is that really they've been bombarded with calls and emails on both sides of this issue. And, you know, he continues to say he's thinking about it. I think part of the thing, though, and I'm aware I saw something that WVU Medicine Children's did, I think part of the awareness has to be able to understand what can these vaccines do and what can they not do. For example, the diphtheria vaccine and the pertussis vaccine don't block transmission. So somebody could, even though vaccinated, somebody could be a carrier and could transmit it to somebody else. The polio vaccine. These are facts, by the way, that are not well known by the public. We're only informed. The public is only informed just so much. So the polio vaccine, if, even if a child has received the polio vaccine, but if they come in contact with the with a polio virus, they can still pass it in their stool and transmit it to others. So these are not you know, foolproof, you get the vaccine, you're protected, everybody else around you is, is protected. Things are not as good as, uh, as they might seem. And then the other issue, the sort of elephant in the room, is the extent of vaccine injury. So I am a member of West Virginia's for Health Freedom, and we have grown dramatically tenfold in the last eight years. And most of the families joining, about 3,000 families now, have vaccine injuries in their family, whether it's the parents or the children. And so every day, and, and uh, Bill was good to compliment my wife. My wife is networking with lots of these families every day. You know, when I come home, she says, oh, I spoke to so-and-so today. Their child got the meningococcal shot and now has a new seizure disorder. And if you look at the package insert, Seizure disorders are a complication of the meningococcal shot. So these these vaccines do have negative consequences as well. It's not all, 
you know, uh, you know, it's not all rosy. And, and, and so I think that's where informed consent is really an important principle. Dr. Moss, if you can carry the virus without getting it, isn't that more of a reason why more people should get the vaccine? Well, but they can still transmit it to others. Right. But that's my so, point. If I if I can, if I get vaccinated, but I can still transmit it to Maria and she chooses not to. Isn't that more of an argument as to why Maria should also get the vaccine? Well, it's only providing you, Rob, with personal protection. It's not protecting Maria. And in fact, we, the second thing we should talk about is vaccine failure. And the problem with, for example, the pertussis, the, the DTaP shot, the pertussis shot is the antibodies. And we saw this with COVID. The antibodies wear off very quickly so that within three years, Somebody could then get infected. And you may be aware of pertussis, whooping cough outbreaks around the country. There have been mumps outbreaks around the country. The news media doesn't cover it that well because they don't want the public to understand what's really going on, that these vaccines are not as effective. But if you read the CDC morbidity and mortality weekly reports, you can learn about these outbreaks. And so even there was an outbreak of in, in vaccinated people with measles and Micronesia reported a few years back. So these these vaccines are not 100 percent. And, you know, if you are really just doing the things you should be doing in terms of maintaining good health, your risk from these diseases is very low. And if you have a religious objection to, for example, the uh, MMR or the chickenpox that are made with uh, cells from uh, lung cells from aborted babies, if you object to, to taking that type of vaccine, my argument is that you should have the right to, to object. Doctor, uh, coming full circle, going to informed consent, uh, that sounds great, uh, but a lot of parents have do not even have the time or the means to do an in, uh, an a, a sufficient research upon their vulnerability of the child. Uh, how do you get around this? Is there, is there a vehicle or there's an opportunity for them to do a specialized informed consent? Well, the uh, CDC requires a vaccine information statement, but over the last 10 years, they've been watered down and watered down. So really, a way for a parent to get informed would be to join something like West Virginians for Health Freedom. Go to the website and join. And there is a ton of information about each of these vaccines. There are people who are very knowledgeable in the healthcare fields who could advise parents who say, I don't have the time to do it myself, but let me talk to somebody who has researched it. And um, West Virginia's for Health Freedom is, uh, is in contact with the National Vaccine Information Center, the Informed Consent Action Network, really people uh, networking all over the country so that parents can be informed in making these decisions. Dr. Moss, thanks so much for your time. I know you need to get going. We appreciate yep. your stopping by this morning. Thank you. Thank well, you. Rob, thank you very much. Thanks, thank Dr. You. Moss. Bye-bye.